This is the second GXS video and it's about installing your pump. First use the tip tell on the box to check that the pump has been handled correctly during transit. Open the outer film wrap, open the shipping carton top and remove the stability frame. Carefully slit open the foil bag. Remove all the outer film. Pull out all the staples which hold the shipping carton to the base pallet. Then lift the carton off and put away. Pull down the foil bag, remove the desiccant sachets, then retrieve both the white and the brown jiffy bags. These contain the essential accessories you will need to install and run the pump. The pump is held onto the base pallet with four large screws. Locate these and carefully remove them and keep them for any later use. Once the screws are removed, use suitable lifting gear to safely raise the pump clear of the base pallet and then move the pallet away. Lower the pump carefully onto its wheels or if you have a skid based GXS onto a suitable carrier and then move the pump to the installation location. Check the contents of the jiffy bags. In the white bag you will find rubber grommets, the water strainer, exhaust seal and clamp and the EMS plug which is essential to make the pump run. The brown jiffy bag contains the user half of the Harting 3 phase power connector plug. Secure the GXS in its position. For rear exhaust models with wheels or casters, drop the feet to the floor and then firmly jack the pump up on them. The seismic brackets on the sides of the rear exhaust caster models can be removed by undoing the screws or they can be used to clamp the pump to suitable restraints. Side exhaust models can be bolted through into the floor or onto suitable framing. The GXS exhaust outlet should be properly and securely connected to suitable rigid or semi-rigid exhaust piping. This minimizes exhaust noise and keeps exhaust gases out of the work area. Remember that condensation of moisture or volatiles can often occur, so make sure the piping drains downhill, otherwise use a drainable accessory silencer trap to catch any expected condensates. The rubber grommets in the white jiffy bag are provided so that you can blank the top panel holes if you decide to remove the pump lifting eyes. The GXS inlet flange is sealed with a thin plastic shipping disc. This must be removed and replaced with a proper metal vacuum flange and piping before the pump can be run. When you remove this disc make sure that no dirt or debris or anything else goes into the open inlet. There is an earth bonding strap next to the inlet which should be used to earth or ground the pump to the incoming vacuum connection metalwork. Carefully locate your inlet flange and use appropriate fixings to make sure it is correctly mounted, mechanically secure and fully vacuum tight. The earth ground strap should be attached using one of the bolts. So now we need to connect to the utility supplies. There is a flow meter or rotameter at the rear of every GXS as all GXS pumps use purge gas in varying amounts. The connector on this rotameter is a quarter inch female swage lock. Always remove the blue shipping stopper from this fitting, even if your purge gas supply is not yet ready. Attach your gas supply. This would normally be dry nitrogen, but clean dry compressed air can also be used if appropriate for the application. The gas pressure specification is clearly marked on the label next to the rotameter connection. Tighten the connection properly. The pump cooling water outlet should be connected next. Water connections are standard male 3 8 BSP and appropriate thread sealing should be used to prevent leaks. In this case we are using optional quick connect fittings on the water supplies. Make sure you hold the pump's bulkhead fitting still while you tighten your connector onto the thread and do not over tighten these connections. Use exactly the same procedure at the cooling water inlet connection, but remember, in this case you should also fit the supplied water strainer, noting the specific flow direction on this device. This is standard good practice, even if you have very clean cooling water. To attach our optional quick connector, we are also using an additional male BSP adapter. Tighten all water fittings adequately, but not excessively. The water supply in and out quick connectors are then simply pushed into place. 
Each GXS also has an additional protective earth ground stud on the rear. Wire this separately to a local electrical earth grounding point. All GXS pumps are provided with a Harting connector. All of the details that you need to know are in the GXS manual which contains the information on the uh, cable rating required and how to actually assemble the plug. But it's worth just having a look at the Harting connector here. The front uh, interface is simply removed in this case by removing the screws here and it pulls away. Obviously you'd feed the cable through the gland at the back of the housing there. And the critical thing on the back of the Harting connector where the cables go in are these conical clamps and these conical clamps are operated so that you retract the conical clamp like this and then you would put in the uh, appropriate cable uh, around the clamp and then as you tighten up the clamp it grips the cable all round and that must be done uh, properly tightly to make sure there's very good electrical contact before then reassembling the connector. This is the Harting three-phase power receptacle on the back of the GXS. There are two locking clips securing the cover. There is also a safety tab which should be loosened and pushed out of the way before the left clip can be released. Push back the locking clips to release them and then free the cover. Your pre-wired Harting power supply connector is then firmly and squarely engaged in the socket and pushed fully home and then properly secured by pulling the locking clips forward on both sides so they snap into place. To minimise the risk of accidental or unauthorised disconnection, the safety tab must then be positioned back behind the left clip and securely fixed into position. This prevents the left clip from being pushed and released. In the white jiffy bag you will find the EMS plug. This is an essential item for running any GXS pump. It is a pre-wired 6-pin Nutric XLR. It must be pushed firmly into the EMS socket on the pump until it clicks into place. If this EMS plug is not fitted, the GXS will not run, but instead will signal an emergency stop alarm. Now that we've connected up our GXS, we're ready to go. We'll just check through everything. The Harting connector for power is fully engaged and locked in position. The EMS plug is plugged firmly in. The exhaust is connected and we've checked that there is no blockages in the exhaust. The water fittings are connected up and the purge gas and the earth position there. So now we're ready to turn on the purge gas like this. We're going to open the water supply and return like that. Water will start to flow through the motor cooling circuit even though the pump is not actually turning at the moment. And then finally, we switch the power on and the pump is ready to run. So we're ready to start the GXS pump now. Just check that the emergency stop button is disengaged, it's out, and then we're going to start it using the dashboard here. Three important buttons on the dashboard. The control button to take control of the pump, the start button and the stop button. A series of LEDs. The green LED here shows clearly we have power connected to the pump. There is an LED for warning, an LED for alarm, and this LED on the end would be for the green mode, for the sleep mode as it's sometimes called, or AUC. So let's take control of the pump by pushing the control button, and we have now control of the pump as the green LED shows here. Simply now we start the pump by pressing the start button, the green LED for running the pump is now on. If the pump was cold, this would be flashing to signify warming up. 